Hi hey YouTube, DeBaudry here. I'm not going to review these speakers per se. So these are AMOS 30 watt um, Bluetooth speakers. It's the new version for 2019. Um, I just got them today off of Amazon. Paid whatever it was, 65 bucks for them. Anyway, um, yeah, I saw the online reviews and thought, hmm, those are probably pretty good. So the first thing I noticed is I had the thing together. I was just using it. And I'd tap on, this, on these parts and... They didn't sound or feel like bamboo. There, there's no grain or anything. Well, I was right. It's plastic. <clears throat> so is the back. So here's the back piece. It's just plastic. The original ones, I've seen videos where I can see actual fibers and stuff, and those were obviously bamboo. Whereas this is bamboo grain printed on plastic. And this is ABS. Anyway, um, so the back has got these posts that uh, push down into holes into the back side. So all this piece is just all plastic. It's all one piece. They push into holes in the back side, um, and that's what secures them. The front side, well, I guess I should start with this. So the, uh, the speakers themselves, uh, they've got uh, screws that pass through the back into these. Turn it over into these pieces right here that secures the speakers to the back and then on the front of it it has posts like this that go into these holes and that's what's secure and they've got a little bit of kind of a gummy stuff in them I would say it's slightly sticky and that's all that holds it together so with some gentle prying at the front and the back these pieces come right off it wasn't very hard at all and uh, if you look at the edges I pried on those with screwdrivers you know little screwdriver and they are completely unmarred it didn't take much to get them off all right so anyway <clears throat> here's the inside you have a board you have a battery pack which I'll talk about in a minute it used to be inside here but I cut it off uh, I can easily tape that back up and stick it back on all right, so let me start with the batteries, and then I'll work to the other things. So I saw inside when I was cutting off this uh, shrink wrapping, green, and I went, oh, there's Samsung batteries in there. Well, uh, ish. How about some Chinese clone batteries? So you see on here, it says INR18650S-2500 uh, mAh. So if you Google for that, um, and you look for Samsung batteries, guess what doesn't exist? That part number. So Samsung does have an INR 18650S-25, which is their 25 milliamp hour or 2500 milliamp hour cell. But this isn't it. This is a Chinese clone uh, knockoff. Not a real live legit Samsung cell. So that was kind of disappointing. Um, on the back side of the battery, there's a little board here. And uh, this is what does all cell balancing and all pack uh, mo or cell monitoring rather. Uh, and keeps the cells in balance. Uh, there's nothing on here that does that. It's all done right here. This yellow wire in here doesn't have anything to do with voltage. I think that's a temperature sensor wire, um, which then, you know, if uh, the battery pack is too warm, maybe it shuts down power here somehow. But really the only thing that, uh, that the main board needs to know about the battery pack is plus and minus. That third one I think has got to be a temperature sensor. So on this board, uh, here's your Bluetooth antenna. This is your Bluetooth 5 uh, radio. Um, this is the uh, CPU for the operation. Both these things run off of 3.3 volts. And right here, this little guy, that is a uh, DC to DC converter, a buck converter specifically. So it takes the voltage off of these, which will be anywhere from 8.2 volts down to say like 6 volts, and regulate that down to a steady 3 0.3 volts for these two guys. All right, um, I'm not going to worry about the other two chips. They don't really do anything important. Uh, this guy right here is a Class D uh, digital amplifier. Um, so they are current amplifiers. They're not voltage amplifiers like like Class Bs and As and things like that are. Um, they get used heavily in motor controllers of all kinds, and they also get used in little amplifiers. Um, these two inductors right here are 
I don't know why they're over there. Some of the parts placement on this thing is a little odd. But these two inductors are uh, used by this guy. And right here is the speaker connector. But um, a Class D amplifier works with an inductive load, basically a coil of wire, of which that's what speakers are. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And on the back side, you've got a large uh, 2200 microfarad, 25 volt cap, and a smaller one. And they're both by some company called Thong, <laughs> or Thang rather. Uh, Chinese stuff, not, you know, name brand parts. Yeah, the, this little guy right here, that one says Thang on it too. Uh, so, value engineered to death. There is nothing here that is, you know, good quality stuff anymore. Uh, let's look at the speakers for a second. So you'll notice on there, 4 ohms, 12 watts. When I was listening to this thing cranked all the way up, I knew it couldn't possibly be 30 watts. It just didn't sound like 30 watts. I know what 30 watts sounds like. And when I get inside and I see this, and by the way, tweeters also say 4 ohms, 12 watts. <clears throat> so when I got inside, I was already highly suspicious. And then I looked up the Class D amplifier. And what I found is that at 8 ohms, of which we have 4 ohm speakers, you can run it at 18 watts per channel. Not 30 watts per channel, 18 watts. At 4 ohms, you can run it at 10 watts per channel. Again, not 30 watts. You know, if you want to call it anything, you know, just to kind of fudge the numbers, it's 20 watts, you know, total between the two channels, or 36 watts, I suppose, you know, if you're running at 8 ohms. Still, not 30 watts, not in this configuration. At best, I would say 20 watts. So, a little disappointing, value engineered to death. Uh, definitely not what the original set of speakers were. This is the 2019 model, you know, the, the revision or whatever, supposedly better. Yeah, I, they still sound okay, but quality has dropped significantly. Um, you'll notice there's these two ribbon cables down here. And there's something underneath there. Well, that goes to this connector, so your USB port. Uh, there is a little bit of control logic inside here, which I haven't bothered to dig out. And, you know, your 8 millimeter port. So, disappointing in several ways. Quality has definitely been reduced. Um, cost has definitely been reduced. Not as good of a product as it was originally. Kind of disappointed. Yep, definitely disappointed.